Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of Experimental Cataclysm, the show where we talk about recent changes to the experimental version of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Now, I am running behind this week because I've been doing a Let's Play of the Sky Island mod. Now, you know there's a shameless self-plug and etc. If you haven't seen it, there'll be a link in the description down below. Having a good time doing a Let's Play again. It's a lot uh, better to sit down and play a game instead of uh, doing like 15 hours of research and testing for this video. I don't know what people think of this. I know some of you really enjoy this series. It's the biggest thing on my channel, but these uh, videos might not seem like much, but they take <laughs> just an enormous amount of work to get them put together. Now, anyway, all of that aside, I've actually got relatively few changes to talk about this week and a lot of them are we're going to take a look at oceans at the end I think with like a just a live recording because it'll be a little bit easier for me next up today from Procyani we've got my third free recording of this episode so that's a lot of fun basically this PR made it so that uh, vehicles can spawn on bridges now we had this ability previously but it was disabled for some reason that I don't really remember and with this PR basically it's very simple vehicles will now spawn on bridges not really anything to special about that actual implementation. The thing that I do want to touch on is that, and the reason for the re-recording, is that in the comments they had said like, hey, maybe we shouldn't spawn these at the bridge transition. And the logic there is that number one, we don't really know how auto drive interfaces with the bridge transition, so it could present a problem there. And two, because we can't see on the bridge, it could lead to you colliding with this vehicle that spawned uh, a foot onto the bridge. And in the comments, it was sort of implied that that was going to be taken care of, but I did reach out to Procyani after uh, I had tested this a bit in the game. In my testing, I found many, many bridges where a vehicle did in fact spawn like one tile from that transition. And they very, you know, honestly just said like, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. So in the future, hopefully we will see it so that these uh, vehicles will not spawn right at that transition because it presents you know, the problems that we just discussed. But at this time, you should be very careful when using auto drive or even driving manually up onto a bridge. I would recommend you get out on foot and have a look before you drive up there. That way you're not colliding with anything. And most bridges are very rural. Uh, there are some that can spawn in towns and things like that, but mostly they're pretty rural. So you don't have to worry too much about being like overwhelmed when you get out of your car to check. So yeah, that's my recommendation. Also because of this uh, addition and my late editing, this video is going to go up on New Year's Day, so uh, Happy New Year's everyone, and we're going to go back to the original video here. Next up today from Novacat, we've got Craftable Ballistic Plates. Okay, and in fact, I'm going to re-record this whole section. I'm a bit confused about these plates as they exist currently. Basically, the premise of the PR is that you can now craft your own ballistic plates to put in your plate carrier, whatever uh, vest you're using for protection. Now, we had a recipe previously for a scrap plate, but this is something I complained about at the time of its release. It basically is just loose scrap metal in a pocket and should not at all have been merged to the game, in my opinion, and should be deleted. Now these new plates are actually much more reasonable. They use the various uh, steel qualities that we've had added to the game and they use like proper recipes in order to make a plate. However, when I talked about this on Discord, some of the more like firearm aware people kind of called these out as not being very accurate or being entirely too good for the quality that they are. Now, I'm a bit confused by this because when I looked in the HHG, it looked like the ballistic protection of the highest tier craftable plate is only only half of what the pre-cataclysm manufactured plate is. So I don't really know how to talk about this other than to make you aware that hey you can craft plates now for your vests and plate carriers whatever however we are supposed to refer to those and these recipes are a lot more reasonable than the scrap plate that still exists in the game for some reason and if anyone watching this thinks that should be removed I would love if you would do that. Consider doing it myself but I don't actually know how to remove something. I've only, only ever added things to the game before. I don't know if there's like an etiquette to it or how you're supposed to do that. Anyway, it's just like you can literally put 50 scrap metal in a pouch and that counts as a plate carrier plate, which just doesn't make any sense to me at all. But anyway, so I didn't know how really to talk about this PR, so apologies for that, but you can craft these plates now if you are looking for replacements. And again, these have pretty reasonable crafting requirements, in my opinion, for what they are. Uh, obviously, the firearm people pushing back, they know a lot more about this stuff than I do. So there's probably a reason why these are bad, but I personally can't see it currently. So just we're going to move on here. 
Next up today from, oh, actually, I'm sorry, I have no idea how to say this name, so forgive me if, like, I'm probably about to butcher this, don't judge me too hard. I'm gonna say Chao Ji Meng Nan would be my guess. Anyway, this person made a PR that fixes some issues with NPCs using ranged bionic weapons. Now, apparently, they would fail to use these weapons at all. The PR says, for example, the laser finger, when activated, would just cause them to become temporarily dazed. And the way bionics work is that they have a pseudo item that's used, and for NPCs, they could not properly get rid of that fake weapon after they used it, which is also very bad. So while I don't fully understand what was causing those issues, this PR has now resolved them. This means that NPCs who have bionic ranged weapons should now properly use them in combat and properly switch back to using regular weapons when they finish using their bionics. Pretty much no NPCs in the game have bionics by default and most of the CBM weapons are honestly not very good slash you wouldn't install them on your companions anyway. So I do think this is sort of niche but obviously someone did some hard work in getting this fixed and I wanted to shout that out. Next up today from Fairy Armadillo, we've got some changes to various vehicle parts related to their storage and an expansion of dumpster sizes as well. There's also some stuff about moving through cargo locations, which I'm struggling a bit to wrap my head around, but we'll try to talk about it here. Storage was increased for lots of vehicle parts, including trunks, aisles, several of the seats, vehicle beds, and for dumpsters as well. Many of the volume reworks seem to revolve around the thought of would a human body fit in that location? Location, because previously things like trunks could not hold a zombie carcass or whatever because of volume issues which obviously you would be able to put a, a human in a trunk. And obviously you would be able to set a carcass in most seats of a vehicle as they're designed to hold the human body just you know it's typically a living one. Now several of these things had their comforts reworked as well including the livestock stall which I find is interesting because it's now comfortable enough to sleep in and I don't think you could do that previously. And then there were a variety of changes related to the player's and monster's volume as they try to move through any tile that contains storage. I'm not 100%, this is the part that I don't fully understand, uh, but I'm going to read you through the basics here. So when the player or NPC or monster will enter a tile that does contain items and does not have, I believe, a new flag called cargo passable, then a check gets made. Okay, and I'm going to pop in here as the editor to summarize this a little bit better than I did in my initial recording. Basically, what you're looking at is the free space available on the tile you're trying to move into. If the free space of that tile is greater than your body's volume, then you have plenty of space and you can enter that area as you always have. However, if the free space is between 75% and 100% of your body's volume, you will enter that space, but you will receive a cramped effect that we're going to talk about here in a second to show that you've squeezed into that free space. And if the free space on that tile is less than 75% of your body's volume, you can't fit in that tile at all. Now this does not account for the weight of your character or the equipment volume, but it is affected by size mutations. And the calculation for this is just to use a body size based on your current size category. Now to most of you that won't mean anything, that's something that's kind of behind the scenes to determine like enemy sizes. So I actually don't know what the average size of a medium size creature is which is what the player is by default I don't actually even know how to look that information up so I can't provide you with the size that it uses here for these calculations anyway we'll get back to the original recording here and when you do squeeze yourself into a cramped space, which again is 75 to 100% of your volume, you will get a debuff for your dex and strength, and it will cause you pain, which will go away when you move out of that cramped space. You can't sleep in a space like this, uh, and there are AI barks as well to show you when an NPC gets stuck in a place like this. And yeah, this is actually something that will affect basically every player, especially considering we're all like big time hoarders in this game. I have pretty mixed feelings feelings about it, but I'm mostly supportive of it. Many of the volume rebalances make a ton of sense, and the logic used in the PR is very good. As for the squeezing into confined spaces, I think it will make aisles for vehicles a little bit more required for us to use when historically a lot of us just ignore those and we would just have a ton of storage spaces, and now trying to move through those storage spaces is going to slow us down considerably and cause some issues. However, I do think this severely damages the ability of 
of players with the huge mutation to interact with their vehicles. Now there are some things you can do like removing the roof will add extra space for you to move on each tile but I worry about how this is going to work with really big characters with uh, some size mutation. Now regardless there is a link to the PR in the description down below if you would like to take a look at it for yourself and read through some changes and of course we are all probably going to experience this as we play the game so it's maybe not something that's like a super big deal once we get acclimated to it but yeah I wasn't sure how to explain this correctly. Anyway next up today from uh, also from Fairy Armadillo we've got seasonal traits and effects. Now this provides the infrastructure for different traits and effects to trigger based on the season that you're currently experiencing. There's also a great deal of changes for player interactions with the sun in terms of sunburn and albinism and most notably photosynthesis for the mutants that use photosynthesis. Plant mutants have a lot of stuff going on here in this PR as well and while I'm not super familiar with that particular mutation tree we will talk about it a little. So some easy examples of these season related changes are seasonal allergies and hay fever which are issues that typically occur in the summertime. These can be fought with the antihistamines that we talked about uh, in the last show when we were talking about the recently uh, added Boomer Bile PR. They also added seasonal affective disorder which to my understanding is a thing where people start feeling lethargic and depressed due to the sun going down earlier in the winter. Uh, additional things here, it looks like uh, the player leaf mutation can now also change color with the seasons and will fall off and die in the winter time. I always thought leaves were just a trait that said something like, like oh instead of hair you have leaves now. So clearly I'm a bit out of touch with plant mutants, uh, you all will know better than I do how all of that works works or if this is a big deal to lose your leaves I'm not really sure how that works there's also apparently now fruiting for plant mutants which you're gonna generate a fruit and in fact can harvest them for a seed which you can then plant for a weird little tree thing now, this seems very bizarre to me I'm not sure how much of this is new and what's old and I'm like I said I'm not up to date on the plant tree I don't know if the fruit takes calories from you to generate and like I have no idea what growing the seed provides you with if anything at all of value but it is very interesting I think it's very cool that you as a plant mutant could grow leaves and fruits and plant your own tree based on something you generated from your body seems very interesting to me well let's see what else is in the PR we've got uh, bears and wolves will now shed fur depending on the time of year which again pretty cool for roleplay reasons and yeah so as far as things go I'm sure I'm missing quite a lot of stuff here this is definitely a theme with fairy armadillo PRs for some unfathomable reason they they really like to make big extremely positive changes to the game what a weirdo I mean just come on so I'm sure I missed more stuff especially due to my like lack of familiarity with mutation trees and I would as always encourage you to check out the PR it's linked in the description down below and of course shout outs to fairy armadillo for doing so much for the game recently I really do believe like part of the reason we talk about these things is because I want to shout people out when they like praise them when they do cool stuff fairy armadillo has been doing a lot lately and I uh, I know I mentioned this in basically every video, but they bullet point their PRs, which is super helpful for me and saves me a lot of time. So always grateful for that. And then finally today, we have a whole mess of changes uh, related to the oceans that we discussed in a previous episode. Now, I'm not sure how many of you were receiving the idea of oceans. I just don't know that I did a good enough job talking about how freaking cool they are and how interesting it is that we have an ocean now. The screenshots are just absolutely gorgeous. I love the map gen. It just looks so good. I love it. I hope all of you like it as well. Anyway, there were a number of PRs uh, related to just the orientation of things spawning in the game, making sure the ocean fits correctly with some of the previous map gen that we already had. So thanks to the several people who worked on getting things oriented correctly. I know it sounds like a very simple thing, like, well, it's, it's rotated. It shouldn't be rotated. But those kind of things are important. So, you know, shout outs to everyone who did that I think I saw Rao Ray uh, Gorgonon come back who I, I you know I believe I shouted them out in a previous episode they were someone who many years ago or several years ago now I guess had done a ton of work with how bodies of water were generated in Cataclysm and that included like lakes and rivers and kind of reworking some of that stuff so uh, unless I'm confusing them with someone else I do want to shout them out because they did a lot of work previously for this kind of stuff we had some little changes like here we have uh 
from DB48X, we've got the addition to where now satellite maps will reveal ocean and shore tiles. They're meant to be satellite maps, so of course they would show the ocean, why wouldn't they? Uh, which is very, you know, I think that's probably like a one line PR. If I had a look here, it probably just adds one literal line, but we'll, we'll you know, it's a good thing. It's, it's good that someone did that. And then Irk added uh, just basically sand to the beach. So instead of just being a grass, uh, like our normal grass and dirt terrain that leads up to the ocean, Irk actually made it so there's like a sandy uh, sort of buffer area. This makes a lot of sense. Obviously not every beach or shoreline is sandy, but a lot of them are. So why not add something like that? Probably makes it look great. I haven't looked at it yet, but I bet it looks fantastic. And then finally from G Car. Yo, oh, I have no idea how to say your name. Carficus? That sounds uh, incorrect, so apologies for that. But we have a lot of ocean creatures basically adding some infrastructure so that we could uh, spawn things specifically in oceans, and then he, or they, added a bunch of fish. Uh, and so we can see in the list here, it looks like we have eels, which existed previously, salmon as well, and Atlantic cod, haddock, Atlanta blue tin, bluefin tuna, Atlantic halibut, uh, pollock, flounder, mackerel, striped bass, uh, bluefish, black sea bass, also known as blackfish, and sc scup. Is scup a fish? That is like, oh, and what an unfortunately named fish that is. It's also known as a porgy. Okay, classic, uh, classic sea life being weird. Or actually, odds are that's like a foreign language name for a fish, and I'm just being insensitive. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, just getting these uh, creatures added means that there's now going to be a little bit more something in the ocean as opposed to previously where it's literally just a big block of water that had no monster spawns and still doesn't have very many points of interest. I still think the addition of the ocean is one of the coolest things that's come recently. And I know we get a lot of changes and I'm sure people will push back or say oh, like, oh, this mechanic was really, really good compared to this. But I just really love the idea of the ocean, man. Like, I just think it's super cool. I think the map gen looks beautiful. And I think it's really neat that all these people, as soon as we got the ocean, oh, like five different people came out of the woodwork to make you know different different things to benefit the the ocean now not to mention the fact that many of these fish are a lot larger than the freshwater fish that we normally would catch in the game i'm not sure how they interact exactly with the fishing like our ability to fish in cataclysm but even if you are able to somehow i don't know corner them and kill them these are probably going to harvest for a lot more meat than uh, some of the basic uh, freshwater like a little carp would right there were also eggs added for all of these creatures as well. So if you're into caviar and roe and that kind of stuff, then, you know, good for you, whatever. And because they also have eggs, it means they also have baby fish versions of themselves as well. And I was going to say that I assume they harvest for the normal fish fillet type items that we would get when we butcher fish, but I don't actually see that here. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to shout out some of those ocean changes. I, again, I really like the idea of the ocean. I think a lot of you do too as well. Uh, so Hopefully this is all good news for you all. I was also going to mention in this video a few of the Sky Island changes since I've been running a Let's Play of that, but I don't usually cover mod stuff. Like I almost, like I historically have never ever covered mod stuff. So I do want to be like, hey everybody, thanks for updating the Sky Island mod as I'm playing it because it's it's benefiting me directly, but also it's not really the, the premise of this show, so we're not going to talk about it at, at length, I guess. So with that, I think that's the end of the episode. Pretty short one uh this week everybody thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video i of course will be back in a couple weeks with another one and i'll see you next time